You have your Raspberry Pi and you've installed Wiring Pi on it. Now what? Hey everyone, Steve Perry here. In this video, I'll show you how to run the GPIO utility, which is included as part of the Wiring Pi distribution. It's a really cool tool you should familiarize yourself with if you're going to write software that uses the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. Here's what you'll see in the video. The GPIO documentation, the GPIO read all command in its output, and GPIO blink to blink a simple LED circuit. To demonstrate GPIO blink, I'll reuse the LED circuit from part one. The GPIO utility has thorough documentation. The wiringpi.com website has a set of reference pages that tell you all about the different options you specify when you run GPIO, along with examples of how to read from and write to the Pi's GPIO pins. GPIO can even control the Pi's internal pull-up and pull-down resistors. Of course, there's always the man page. This is the canonical reference to GPIO, and as you can see, it is quite exhaustive. If you're going to work with the Raspberry Pi, you need to be able to use and understand the output of the GPIO read all command. But first, a little background on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi uses what's referred to as System on a Chip, or SOC. Broadcom has made all of the SOCs used in the Raspberry Pi since the Pi 1. Now, using a terminal window, enter the GPIO read all command. I'll quickly summarize the information that's shown. The BCM column refers to the Broadcom SOC's internal PIN number. This is the same PIN number you'll see on the expansion board. I'm not really sure why that is. Does anybody know why that is? I have three breakout boards, and all of the GPIO pins on all three boards are marked using Broadcom's pinout. The pin marked on the expansion board corresponds to the BCM pin from GPIO Read All, so keep that in mind when you're using the expansion board. The second column is the Wiring Pi pin number. This is the pin number that will be referenced in the code that uses Wiring Pi. Notice the GPIO pin number matches the Wiring Pi pin number. The name column is just a helpful description of the pin. For example, the pins labeled 5V are plus 5 volts from the Pi, 0V are ground pins, and so on. Mode indicates whether the pin is set to receive input from the outside, in which case it says in, or to send output outside the Pi, in which case it says out. V indicates the current high-low state of the pin. A 1 indicates the pin is high, and 0 that the pin is low. Physical indicates the location of the pin on the physical GPIO header itself. Pin 1 starts nearest the micro SD drive. Pin 2 is across from it. Odd numbered pins are on the same header row, as are even numbered pins. The physical pin numbers continue in this fashion to pin 40, which is near the USB drive. I'd like to show you another command you can execute with GPIO called blink. Remember the simple LED circuit from part one? I'll show you how to make the LED blink by hooking it up to one of the Pi's GPIO pins and telling the GPIO program to blink that pin. Blink just means on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. You get the idea. The circuit I'll use here differs from the one in the video for part one. Instead of supplying power to the LED circuit through the power rail on the breadboard, I'll wire it instead to get power from BCM number 25. Then I'll tell GPIO to blink pin GPIO 6. The mappings get confusing, I know, so let's use GPIO read all to find the mapping. BCM number 25 is GPIO 6. With the circuit wired up, I'll open a terminal window and enter the GPIO blink command. GPIO space blank space 6. And check it out, the LED blinks about once every second. If I go to another terminal window and run the watch command every 0.5 seconds to execute GPIO read all, I can see the pin changes states. And that was a quick look at the GPIO utility. 
For more information, make sure to visit Gordon Henderson's GPIO utility documentation. A link to the documentation is in the video description. Be sure to check out other videos in this series where I'll show you how to install Wiring Pi and 433 utils and show you how to capture 433 MHz signals using the receiver module, then broadcast those identical signals through the transmitter module to control your IoT devices. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Steve Perry. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So long.